Hello, my name is Rebecca and I am the teacher author behind It's Not Rocket Science. And today I'm going to take you on a tour of my physical science curriculum. And physical science is taught so differently in every state. So I'm going to give you a little backstory first before I take you on the visual tour, just to give you some context of where I'm coming from and where I came from when I was writing this curriculum. So my first official teaching job was at a public high school, and I had a few sections of physical science that were all ninth and 10th graders. There was an on, a few honor sections and then college prep, which would be um, CP or your on grade level students. When after that, I had a teaching job at a private school where I did teach high school, but I was given a few sections of eighth grade and in eighth grade, they did physical science. So there was no high school physical science course. Instead, it was taught in eighth grade. And it was just like and when I was in public school, where we did a semester intro to physics and a semester intro to chemistry. So this is marked as being usable for eighth through 10th graders because that is the experience I have using it. But you may have different student populations than I do. I will say that regardless of if it was an eighth grader or a 10th grader, my college prep students were all concurrently taking Algebra 1 while taking my physical science course, and my honor students had all previously taken Algebra 1. So that'll give you an idea of kind of the background knowledge and skill level needed to be successful with this curriculum. But now let's get into the visual part. So everything is divided into units. This curriculum has nine units in it. I start with an intro to physics and then I finish with an intro to chemistry. I've always done it this way because the departments that I've taught in have asked it to be this way because typically um, students go on to take chemistry immediately after taking my course or biology and then chemistry. And then physics is more an upperclassman elective. So the chemistry teachers had asked that the chemistry would be the second portion so that it would be the most fresh in their minds. So this is kind of how I've done it, but it definitely can be switched up. Regardless, I would start with unit one, um, which is just kind of an overview of a bunch of different skills they'll need for the course. We do lab safety and equipment, measurement, dimensional analysis, and scientific notation, and then an overview of experimental design that some would refer to as a scientific method. But for this video tour, I'm going to take you on a tour of motion and force. It's one of my favorite units. All of the units come with five folders, an implementation folder, which is all of the notes that you need to be success successful teaching this. When I decided I wanted to start writing curriculum, my curriculum up to be shared with other teachers, I wrote it with the first year teacher in mind. I thought, okay, when I was a first year teacher or when I was teaching this subject, like when I taught AP biology for the first time, what do I wish I had had? So these are all those supplemental support documents that I wish I had had and they were especially helpful when we adopted our son and I went on an extended maternity leave very last minute and I had a substitute teacher a long-term sub that was not a science person so these were all extremely helpful for that person I have a packets folder which I'll get into that strategy in a minute notes activities and then all of your quizzes and tests Everything in this physical science curriculum is differentiated on two levels, CP, which is your on grade level, and then honors, which would be your more advanced students. In the implementation folder, I always like to start with the read first document. This is going to be your best friend, especially if you're new to using my resources. It starts by telling you what's in each of the folders. It's kind of like your table of contents here. And then we just have an overview of kind of my strategy behind why I do what I do and how I organize the unit, how my, I've graded things in the unit, which is some suggestions. You can always do what you prefer. The materials list, so you can kind of take this as your one-stop shop to go get what you need. I did not have a science budget at my most recent school, so everything I try to use are things that you can have around your house or you can you know, easily pick up at Walmart or Amazon. And then I have my step-by-step -step commentary on every single day, what I did and how I did it in my classroom. This goes alongside your unit plans. So I have the unit plans available four ways. First is your CP unit plan, so your on grade level plan. I have, I walk you through your day-to-day. -day. This would be something where I would print this and have this on my desk to refer to each day as I was teaching through the unit. This is all paced on a 50 minute grading period. Now, I also taught 
at a school that was on block schedule. So not only do I have the unit plans for honors as well, but I also have them for blocks, so 90 minute class periods as well. So that pacing is available for you. But then these, these implementation notes in the read force are kind of, they'd be most useful for you the first time you're teaching this through. Other resources in this implementation folder, newly added thanks to the pandemic, are distance learning tips. These are kind of suggestions if you're in a hybrid situation or you're fully virtual um, for how you can make modifications um, for this. So this unit in particular, the majority of it can be used. I give some tips for how you could modify some of the labs that might be a little bit trickier. And then I have a list of all the things that can be done completely without modification at home. If you're in an NGSS school, I have an alignment doc included as well. This gives you some ideas for phenomena you can use to um, guide your instruction and, and really lead your instruction and in how you're going to approach this with your students. And then I take every instructional resource that I use and I list out the science and engineering practices and the cross-cutting concepts that they go with. Also in here, we have editable versions of the unit plans in case your school has a particular format you need them in. Um, I have a reference sheet for different conversion factors and things like that if that is um, needed for the unit. And also a how to write a great study guide tip, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay, I'm going to cut into the video that I originally made of the video tour and add a new addition, a new clip, because the packets folder was majorly updated in 2021 so I want you to see what is now included so just like always I still include the packet in two formats the original CP college prep on grade level format and then the honors format and the packet strategy is an organizational tool that I've used for my curriculum since day one I find it so effective and helpful for my students especially my students with accommodations and it also just makes my life much easier only having to make copies once a unit. So essentially the packet is all of the student handouts that your students would need for the entire unit in one place. So the cover page of each unit is organized into concepts and there's usually three to four concepts per unit. And I subdivide those concepts into objectives, key vocabulary, and practice questions, which are unique to physical science. So the objectives are really the skills that they will need to be able to do. Vocabulary are key terms they need to know. And then the practice problems just kind of give them an idea of some of the practical things they may be asked to do on an assessment. And there are editable versions of these cover pages, so you could customize this for your students if you have different expectations for them within the unit. And then after that, you will find everything that they need. So first, you will find Cornell note outlines for every set of lecture notes. And so these have embedded examples. There's tons of practice problems in the physical science curriculum, which I love. There are also um, practice pages that can be done in class or for homework, activities with graphing. All of the labs that you would need are already in here, as you can see here. Um, and then if there are any projects, those are in here as well. Or um, for instance, if there's a lab station activity, it, like there is in this unit, there's the answer sheet for that. So everything your students need is right here. And then there's another lab that my students really, really love in this unit. So that is your packet. And again, it comes in two formats. Now, we also have always had the paperless digital format as well. I added this um, in 2018. So there's also some paperless digital versions, but and I will show you how that looks. But you'll click these links. They won't be interactive when you first open them. You will have to go to file and make a copy and then save them to your drive. But then from there, you'll be able to interact and you're, you can share these with your students as well. So all the text boxes are added in there, um, links to the lecture notes if you want them to watch the lecture video. I'll also include prompts like, okay, this is where you need to insert a graph here and here's how you do that, that kind of thing. And then I love these also because you can zoom in and um, zoom out really easily for your students. Now, the newest addition to the packets um, that came in 2021 are I now have filled in versions of the notes and fill in the blank versions. So. What that looks like is the same packet, but everything is completely filled in for your students um, in terms of the notes. So everything else would be blank, but then it gives them a chance to work through every, um, 
the rest themselves. So all of like the example problems are filled in, but then I still leave the practice problems that are in the notes blank so that they can work on those themselves. So there are now filled in versions as well as fill in the blank. So here's an example of what that looks like. And you, again, you can see that in comparison to what the, just the original version is. And then we have those for the digital version as well. So you fill in the blank, and then here's an example of what the filled in version would look like. So it still leaves them space to do some of the practice problems and jot some things down in the margins. Additionally, in this packets folder, you have the packet keys. That is where you'll have the answers to all the practice problems and examples um, and all the practice handouts and things like that. And then last but not least, I have my students make study guides from these cover pages because all of the questions on my quizzes and tests go back to something from this cover page, which is why I love the packet strategy, again, just for alignment purposes. So I have my students make study guides where basically they have to define the vocabulary and go through the practice problems and then also know that they will be expected to be able to accomplish those objectives as well. And so I have these study guide answer keys so you can go over these on your review day if you would like, and they're fully animated in PowerPoint uh, mode. And I have the problems worked out with all the work shown and everything like that. So those are there to help you as well. In the notes folder, you have all of your lecture notes for the entire unit. These are all fully animated in presenter mode and they're .pptx, so they can be uploaded to Google Slides and used there as well. I always include examples, and if I can, I'll put some helpful teaching tips in the notes section as well. I include breaks so that you can do practice problems with your students that are in the packets, um, and everything you need is here for that. Additionally, I've recorded lecture videos for all of my notes, so you can actually preview every single honors and um, physical science video that I have. Um, they are all here for you, and you can use these even if you don't use my curriculum. In the activities folder, these are any supplemental resources you may need to implement any of the activities. For example, these are the station cards for exploring force and motion a little inquiry activity, you would print these, cut, laminate them, and use them year after year. So those are available for you. And then I do include in my physical science curriculum, which I don't have in my biology or anatomy, but I do have a Jeopardy style review game for each of those as well. And then last but not least are all of your quizzes and tests. They do come in an editable format and are differentiated for CP and honors. And then I have detailed handwritten answer keys where I've worked through every problem for you. One last thing I want to make note of before the video ends are two other additions that were added to the curriculum bundle in 2021. So first, I added some binder covers. This is something that people ask for. So if you want to print these out for yourself or for your students, they come in color and black and white. And then there's also spines that you can use um, in your binder just for your own personal organization. And then I also added um, a year-long or semester-long independent research project. Um, this is also available a la carte, but anyone who owned the curriculum bundle prior to the update in 2021 got this for free. But essentially, it is a PBL, project-based learning-inspired long-term research project for your students. And it walks you through exactly how to do the traditional PBL process and each part of it. And I give you some driving questions you can use for your students, pacing guides, checklists, all of that. And then of course, your student handouts as well. So this is something you can kind of do as an alternative midterm or final exam. These are all the different resources your students can use to plan and prep. Um, and it's just another way to assess your students in a time when you know traditional assessments are often not as authentic as they used to be, um, just with the changing times. So this is what you now get as of July 2021 when you invest in the full year physical science curriculum bundle. And again, if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to reach out and ask an email. I would love to help you discern if this is the right fit for you and your students prior to purchasing.